Hello everyone, my name is Alexey Kondikov and uh, here you will see also my colleague Yuri Serdyuk. Uh, we are cybersecurity researchers from uh, Navinfo Europe, company based in Netherlands. We provide uh, cybersecurity researches and pen tests for modern cars and automotive um, devices. So, and today we are going to talk about uh, um, extracting info from internet access units of uh, modern cars. Um, so, why it is uh, interesting and important? Uh, from uh, sec security research point of view. First of all, um, Internet Access Unit, um, w w which uh, we will analyze today, um, ha has um, different um, packaging of the um, memory chips. So, uh, and this is quite unique chip, so we will describe it later. Uh, it consists, consists of two uh, memory inside one package um, and uh, we will cover how we will uh, extract it, how we deal with uh, different tricks which uh, automotive um, um, makers are trying to uh, make it impossible to read uh, this memory. Uh, we will explain how we made uh, uh, reader, how we dumped all the information, and um, or we will explain of the file system on this device. Um, so, what we are going to speak about. If uh, you will have uh, the car uh, made someone from 2019, uh, it highly likely has uh, some kind of internet access unit. Um, inside, and uh, if you open this module, you will see uh, um, the dedicated PCB uh, sandwiched on the main PCB. Uh, this uh, PCB is covered with uh, metallic shields, as you can see here. And um, no matter of the vendor, uh, usually, yeah, no matter of the car, uh, no matter of who uh, made this um, uh, this particular internet access unit, uh, highly likely it will have the same architecture as we will describe today. So, um, why it is uh, interesting for analyzing? It is uh, um, yeah emergency call unit. It has uh, embedded SIM, so it has. Uh, all the kind of connection, network connection uh, to the uh, mobile uh, network, to the vendor company backend, and uh, also participates in all, sign, uh, all kind of uh, over there updates. So it is very juicy uh, target for, for exploitation. Um, inside you will find uh, uh, the particular uh, family of the memory chips. We will describe it a bit later. It is not standard chip, um, so basically you... It is kind of um, kind of hard to find it anywhere else. Uh, it has uh, inside NAND flash and DDR2 in one package. And uh, you basically don't find any readers or sockets for for reading this uh, kind of memory chips. Uh, so sometimes um, this chip also glued to the PCB, and um, it is, has a very kind of um, yeah custom format of the memory layout inside. So if you will uh, open uh, this um, uh, module. If you unsolder all the shields, you will see something like this. Uh, usually, uh, this is uh, like the module uh, which is running on um, uh, Qualcomm CPU, usually MDM uh, family. Um, and memory chip, for example, here you can see uh, um, with marking J JYA35. Um, if you will uh, enter this marking into the, uh, this is called FPGA, uh, BGA code, 
If you enter this code in the micro, uh, microchip uh, website, uh, you will have all the information like with uh, data sheets about uh, your uh, memory chip. So, um, another example here, uh, also you, you can see the, uh, the same uh, family of CPU and yeah, the same kind of the same family of uh, NAND chip. Um, uh, first of all, packaging of this chip is uh, um, 162 BGA, which is uh, this, uh, the packaging is the same as uh, a lot of uh, EMMC uh, um, memory chips has, have, but it is not EMMC, and uh, yeah, uh, all pins also on the bottom, so uh, you cannot solder directly to the pins to read it out without unsoldering. Yeah, um, if you open the data, data sheet for this chip, you will see that there's basically two chips inside one package. One is NAND, fam, uh, NAND flash uh, and uh, another one is DDRAM memory. They, has, uh, they have even um, two separate uh, power lines. So, um, and pinout you can see on the, on the slide. Yeah, and some vendors, uh, we think for preventing unsoldering these chips, um, put it on some sort of compound or glue. So basically, it is um, impossible to unsolder it without damaging the chip itself. So uh, possible solution which first comes to mind is uh, uh, different types of solvents. We've tried um, um, polar solvents, solvents like acetone, for example, or unpolar, non-polar solvents like tetrahydrofuran. Um, it doesn't work. Uh, this kind of compound um, is not um, as soluble with these solutions. Um, uh, next step we've tried, we bought uh, ultrasonic bath. Um, if you guys are familiar with um, this kind of equipment, it, it is basically um, the bath where you put some uh, water with some kind of uh, solvents as well. It can be soap or anything else. You turn it off uh, on and uh, with the uh, ultrasonic wave emission it creates a lot of bubbles which uh, should destroy all kind of contaminations, dirt and stuff which you put inside. But we thought like um, maybe we should put inside uh, different solvents instead of uh, water and to see if it will um, make any difference. Um, so, yeah, um, we figured out actually that uh, if you do this, it will also heat this um, liquids up, up to the boiling temperature. Usually it's like 50 or 60 degrees. It will start boiling as well, not only from ultrasonic, but because of the temperature. And, um, yeah, um, you will have um, a lot of um, um, highly flammable toxic liquid which will boil um, in your um, apartment or whenever you are doing this. So um, please don't do this. Uh, this is one, uh, actually, uh, yeah. <laughs> One option why you shouldn't do this. Another option that it also didn't work. Um, so yeah, the next step um, was just cutting this uh, piece of PCB uh, out of the board. This will totally destroy the device, of course, but we needed the information which is uh, stored inside this uh, memory chip. So. We cut the PCB and started layer by layer grind the PCB until we will reach pinouts. Um, yeah, it is a kind of difficult and del delicate process, uh, but uh, if you will have enough of motivation, you will succeed in it. So 
Yeah, this is how process of grinding looks like. You can see how we removed uh, PCB layer by layer until uh, we, we see that only compound is left on the memory chip. And then um, to remove the compound, you can just use uh, the soldering iron, which is heated to the yeah, high temperature, and just crack it with it. So after you finally removed the um, glue, there is a question how to read this chip. And as I said, there is no any connectors and readers outside, so we've created our own um, PCB connector board. Um, so basically, after uh, you are uh, done with this, all this process with glue, you need to rebolt the chip. Uh, luckily, the uh, stencil you need to use is uh, very common, so it's not a problem. You will rebolt it and then put a uh, chip on the uh, on this board, um, solder it to, to the board, and then uh, for building the reader, we used uh, FT2232 board. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty universal solution for this kind of um, tasks. So let's see what's inside the chip, how the memory is organized. So basically, um, memory is uh, separated on uh, pages. Each page consists of uh, 4,320 bytes. Um, it is um, 4,096 bytes of memory and uh, 224 bytes of uh, so-called out-of-bounds memory. Um, which is also quite unusual for the uh, non NAND chips. Um, yeah, uh, and um, memory then uh, in organized in blocks. Each block uh, consists of 64 pages, and there are like two, um, in two planes of uh, 1024 blocks each, so uh, nothing really difficult. Um, now, how we can dump this uh, uh, memory? We needed something which uh, very basic, but provides us opportunity to dump the raw memory without any uh, identification process of chip and stuff like this. So basically just a tool which works on uh, basic uh, NAND, NAND protocol. We found a NAND tool, a uh, pretty straightforward uh, tool written on, on C, is this open source, so you can download it, compile it, it, is wor it is, works fine with uh, this uh, reader we made, so yeah. After we finally dumped the image, we run um, bin walk on this uh, image, and we found something odd that, um, yeah, we found, first of all, there are like a lot of stuff. There is a lot of stuff uh, inside, like uh, Qualcomm file system, UBFS file system, SquashFS, and so on and so on. But we also find that not all addresses uh, uh, for of file system chunks are aligned in, in like, inside. So this, this was kind of odd and weird, but yeah, let's see. What we can do with it? If you will try to just um, go and straightforwardly uh, dump, uh, extract, and try to mount this file of system, uh, fi uh, file system, we failed to do this. Um, we started to analyze why it is not possible for us to to mount it. So we run the, for example, entropy test for our image. And you can see something also very weird on the picture. Um, yeah, we have basically uh, uh, two identical images. Uh, so we st tried to compare it and we see that we have identical data uh, just uh, which starts just in the middle of the image, the same data as on the, yeah, on the first page. So, yeah, does it really keeps the full copy 
of data inside. Um, this was the question, and now I will pass my uh, word to my colleague. Hello, everyone. Um, I am Yuri Serduk. I am a lead security researcher at NAF Info. Uh, what we have now? We have a full copy of the non flash. flash. It's uh, not usual. Uh, from our experience, usually vendors just uh, store data on some separate partition. It can be two partitions, but not full copy of the data. And we start our investigation. Um, and first we discovered, we discovered bug and non tool. This is an uh, integer overflow bug. Uh, you can see on this screen a piece of the code. Uh, which is responsible for reading NAND memory. And for pointing on pages, you can see argument uh, page number. Uh, this page number has size uh, integer. It's only four bytes. Also, you can see address, uh, this big address, 10E0000. This is address or offset in NAND memory when we see the same data. Uh, we can calculate page number by dividing address uh, to page size, and uh, page number will be 10,000 hex byte. And if check uh, source code, you can see on the source code page number shift on 16. And what we have in result? Our value higher than 4 bytes. That's why we see full data somewhere in the middle. Uh, also, we confirm it with uh, disassembler. You can see EBP register stores page number, and it's only four bytes. After shifting, it loses data. Okay, we fixed this tool and reread uh, data from NAND chip again. Uh, this is entropy, which we received with bin wolf. Uh, picture is different like before. It, uh, it has some Backup partition, but almost uh, another site is different. Again, we try to extract a squash of S file system, mount it, but uh, it's um, tool mentioned its file system is corrupted. So, uh, to normally work with uh, dump memory, we should uh, remove meta information from NAND chip. Uh, usually, NAND data stores uh, on the page data. According to the sheet, it is 1,000 hex bytes, and OB blocks, uh, it is E0 hex bytes. Uh, we need to remove this OB blocks. Also, if you check uh, uh, picture, uh, you can see uh, at the end of the page uh, goes OB block. It's uh, 224 bytes. But what is in reality? Uh, to understand where is in the page uh, uh, meta information or OB block, we should have kind of uh, ground truth data. It can be, for example, a whole page uh, filled with the same byte, or uh, it can be plain text. Uh, we found several pages, uh, for example, page 41, which uh, stores uh, text. You can see end of the uh, 41 page. We, you can see some meta information. And also if read text, uh, for example, from uh, top picture, uh, you can read delta apps image loaded. You can see the meta information stores between the text. But very weird things, uh, we have only 6F bytes of meta information, not like in mentioned in data sheet. If check uh, another pages, for example, 42, again, we have 6F bytes. But we also found page 82 with size of meta information only 4F. We have many questions. Where is our OB block? Why size of meta information is different? And why less than E0. We continue our investigation. 
We found a page which fully contains plain text, uh, collected all offsets with meta information, and analyzed it and created these two structures. We discovered a page consists from chunks. Uh, size of chunk is uh, 214 bytes. Uh, chunks go one by one. Uh, just only eight chunks. And after this, you can see padding. It, it is uh, at the, uh, in second picture, it's just only FFF 40 bytes. Uh, you can see also structure of this uh, meta information uh, of the chunk. At the beginning goes data, then one byte highlighted with red, uh, just meta information, just in our case it's always FFF, some data and some meta information with uh, F bytes. So what we have now, we have uh, 1020 bytes of data and uh, OB block or meta information C0. It's already better than we have before, but where is our 20 bytes of meta information? Because data sheet mentioned about uh, it, the size of meta, meta information should be E0. Uh, we continue our investigation and uh, carefully check uh, content of the pages. Uh, and we discovered very weird things uh, in the uh, last chunk. Uh, we highlighted it with green. In the uh, top picture, it looks like this data belongs to data because it stores plain text. But if check more carefully, uh, at the beginning it looks like a Linux path. If try to read it, it's slash EFS PRX valid age. Sounds a little bit weird. But it can be another name. It can be slash EFS private, which looks more logical. It looks like this data, it's, it's, it's not part of the data, it's part of the meta information. Also, we can check, uh, for example, page below. Uh, you can see this 20 bytes, just some data with low entropy. We analyzed many this, uh, buffers. And discovered uh, sometimes this uh, 20 bytes with plain text, sometimes with uh, low entropy data, sometimes with zero. And uh, we also discovered this data stores in previous chunk. It looks like uh, um, code which store, uh, creates these pages doesn't clear buffer from previous operation and just stores this data in this buffer. Uh, so. We name this buffer unused because it's uh, every time stores some random data. And now what we have? We have uh, data with 1000 bytes hex and meta information E0. It's uh, now everything according data sheet. Uh, but we would like to understand what is uh, inside the, this meta information. Uh, usually NAND uh, memory stores uh, in uh, OOB blocks, uh, page number, and uh, error correction codes. Uh, we start analyze our structures uh, we defined, and uh, what we see, data zero and data one uh, stores flash data. We saw before it's some text. Uh, meta zero, it's one byte, in our case, in all pages, stores FF byte. Uh, unused buffer stores uh, some random data every time. Padding stores FFF bytes. Only one field we need to understand what uh, it is a field meta. We analyzed uh, data on this uh, field and uh, we don't see any monotonic increasing data. It's uh, highly likely doesn't store page number and uh, entropy of this field uh, very high. Hi highly likely it is error correction code. We collected several algorithms, well-known algorithm error correction codes uh, and start brute, force, brute, brute forcing parameters. 
and we found uh, algorithm. It is uh, BCH with these parameters. Now we have everything to uh, recover data from errors and remove OB blocks. We wrote script uh, which uh, fixed data and remove uh, these blocks. And here you can see result. This is result of bin walk. Now you see uh, addresses aligned. It's already good sign. And uh, even we already can extract data with bin walk, many data. But we would like to understand structure of the disk. Uh, here you can see hex data on right side. And uh, if you check first line uh, and try to Google, this is uh, magic values. And we found uh, source uh, code. Uh, if check defines, it's, uh, this uh, defines it exactly first line of the hex data. Uh, this source code responsible for parsing call compartitions. We used this uh, structures, uh, created script which uh, printed uh, list uh, partition, all offsets for every partition and sizes. Uh, so, we also added description for every partition. Uh, how you can see this is called COM partitions. Uh, it has Android uh, kernel, Android operation system, and has uh, many UB partitions. Uh, now we can extract data. We cut it partitions and extracted uh, uh, UB file system with UB reader. This is open source tool. We use uh, UB reader extract images and extracted uh, this list of images. You can see, for example, some partition, for example, system stores uh, SquashFS file system with uh, DM integrity, some certificates. Also, customer to partition stores uh, UB file system. UB file system also possible extract with these tools, what we did. Uh, you can see result of extraction and some files and Folders. As a partition we discovered on the disk, it is named backup partition. Uh, hex uh, dump you can see on right side. This partition also has uh, magic text. It's good arch. We try to Google and found script uh, parsecv.pl. The script should extract uh, uh, information from this archive, but in some reason the script fails during the extraction, but the script help us understand structure of uh, this uh, archive. You can see size uh, uh, of compression data, compression data, and also uh, name of the archive. We also defined uh, uh, structure after we decompress data, appears another data, uh, we also understand structure of this data. It uh, have uh, a good archive hider, which stores number of blocks, and blocks goes one by one, and every block stores items. Uh, in our case, only in one block, only two items. It is uh, pass and uh, data. We created script, Python script, which used this defined structures and extract extracted uh, file system. You can see list of good archives and uh, example extracted uh, file system for one of the good archive. So, uh, we have not only, not only one non-flash, we have another non-flash, non-flash JY990 from another internet access unit, another uh, modern electrical car. Uh, we also found data sheet uh, in Micron website, and uh, you can see page size is uh, less than in previous uh, non-flash. It stores only 2,048 bytes, and uh, OOB block only 64 bytes. Uh, so we applied the same approach like before, and understand uh, uh, structure of pages. You can see defined uh, 
uh, structures and you can see uh, page stores only uh, four chunks. Also, we brute forced the uh, error correction codes. Uh, it's again VCH, but with uh, another parameters. So we have everything to fix data and uh, remove OB block, and we can now work normally with our uh, memory dump. Uh, we also found uh, call com partition with this offset. Uh, you can see name of uh, partitions. Uh, it has less partition and less than previous one. And also UB file system, which we extracted. You can see images of this uh, UB file system and uh, example of one of the UB file system. Well, uh, in conclusion, uh, we uh, successfully removed a chip from non-flash dispire glue on PCB. Uh, we built uh, a reader for non-standard uh, non-flash memory. We discovered uh, integer overflow bug in non tool. Uh, our non-flash in uh, Internet Access Unit uh, has uh, a custom implementation, but uh, we understand uh, structure of pages and OB block and ECC codes and uh, extracted. And uh, we don't use only hex dump to understand structure. Uh, we found uh, disk partition, extracted UB file system, and also we understand format good archive and extract all files. Uh, our plans in future, we have two modern electrical car with internet access unit from which we already extracted uh, file systems. Uh, we plan to do security assessment uh, these uh, two uh, devices. And uh, we plan to obtain access, SSH or ADB access to these devices and uh, try to find uh, some vulnerability. Uh, so this is the link we used during our research. And thank you for your attention.